What's going on there folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this wonderful Wednesday night, October 18th. Yeah, 18th, 19th coming up tomorrow, uh, 2023. It's about 10.20 a.m. or p.m. Goodness, in the p.m. I'm ready for bed. Uh, California time out here. Seeing a little bit of movement kicking up here over the western areas of the Pacific Plate. Obviously very noticeable here across this area. Along the uh, Mariana Trench, Izu Trench getting in on a little bit of activity up there as well, but not in the swarming area that we had seen over the past couple weeks. This is a little bit further uh, up along the trench zone itself, closer to the plate boundary. Uh, and we did have some activity stretching here across the Mariana Trench early this morning at 5.2 in the Guam area, but things are definitely looking somewhat active, a little bit more uptick here in earthquake activity along the entire western section here of the Pacific Plate kind of keeping an eye on that. I uh, did see some activity stirring up here in the Japan area right along the plate boundary with a 5.0. A uh, pretty shallow earthquake coming in here within the last uh, couple hours or so. As uh, far as the west coast regions, uh, did see that four-pointer USG, USGS settling with a 4.2 magnitude earthquake uh, which was felt there in the Bay Area and uh, all over Sacramento, Stockton, Lodi area. Uh, still uncertain on to which fault system this earthquake struck on. There's a couple different faults that run uh, on the west side of the valley called the Great Valley uh, Thrust Zone. It's kind of a thrust area that runs up here uh, along the entire section of the, the uh, Sacramento-San Joaquin Valley area. But this one's a ways uh, in there, a little bit underneath the Delta area, about 8 kilometers deep for that earthquake. Uh, so I'm a little uncertain on to which specific fault system that struck on. Up in Northern California here, um, seen a couple smaller earthquakes earlier this morning. We haven't really seen any further aftershock activity following that 4.2, so that's a little concerning as well. Just makes me think that pressure is quite great out here across the West Coast. Um, there's quite a few fault systems that we know of here in the Bay Area that are uh, definitely capable of producing some large earthquakes and are quite overdue in terms of their reoccurrence intervals. So I want to keep an eye on this area with that odd earthquake away from the plate boundary like that. Uh, Southern California, awfully quiet. Not a whole lot going on there. Got a total of 10 earthquakes. That includes a couple quarry blasts. Nothing big going on. The San Andreas Fault sleeps for now. Uh, up into the uh, Washington area, the Mount St. Helens area looks pretty quiet. Nothing showing up spe uh, specifically around the uh, around that volcano. Uh, one little earthquake up north there, 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, Yellowstone National Park seismograph stations here. Um, let's check those because this looks pretty quiet up there. I want to double check the latest overview here. See if they are working, which they are. Uh, we'll check out this area out here, Maple Creek area. There's a handful of very small earthquakes. These are going to be the uh, specific ones that I'm speaking of here. These little spikes on the graph over the last 24 hours or so. But nothing big going on, just some very small quake activity. No major swarms to take note of. Uh, out in Texas, Pecos, Texas, get these oil fields kicking up pretty uh, frequently today, it looks like. Although most of this uh, was about 2 o'clock in the morning or so. Seen quite a few 2s and 3s out here in the area around the uh, uh, this oil field pumping operation. Also a solar farm out here as well. Seen some earthquakes underneath this region. But you can see all the, um, the distinct oil fields out here. Uh, wastewater disposal facilities out there as well. That's going to be these little pond looking things out here on the satellite view quite a few of them if you zoom in and uh, take a look there uh, so we'll continue to watch that uh, definitely shown some uh, elevated activity out there in texas uh, the eastern portion of the country late last night we did see this earthquake pop into missouri a 2.6 coming in to the new madrid seismic zone i think this originally came in as a 2.9 i seen this just as i was sleeping putting my phone up I was, uh, I was like, man, should I do an update on this? It was a 2.9, somewhat of a larger quake there for the New Madrid zone, at least as far as uh, earthquakes that we've seen here recently. But it looks like they've dropped it down there to a 2.6. Nothing kicking up there so far following that earthquake movement last night. Uh, across the Puerto Rico area, 
handful of earthquakes up there as well um, around the Puerto Rico Trench. Looks like um, uh, this one here is from just tonight, a four-pointer right smack dab on the plate boundary itself. Been watching this here over the past couple years or so. There's a little uncertainty on if this thing is capable of producing a, uh, you know, a mega quake. It's a obviously a trench subduction zones all around it and over here along the eastern areas of um, the uh, Caribbean plate. Uh, but I think it does have a possibility of, of um, mega quake potential. How, how long the uh, in, uh, re uh, reoccurrence intervals are on this, it's hard to say. Uh, but if this thing does decide to kick up uh, an eight pointer or so, that could send a uh, definitely a tsunami out there across the Atlantic. Um, it's something we haven't seen out here for uh, a very, very long time. But uh, just kind of keeping an eye on this here with this elevated movement here, uh, specifically right there on the plate boundary itself, the Puerto Rico Trench 4.4 earlier this afternoon just offshore of El Salvador that's the middle America trench here about 65 kilometers deep into this subduction zone Be beautiful subduction zone but also very dangerous in terms of uh, large earthquake potential uh, a little bit of activity here across the Chile Argentina border region this is uh, pretty deep into the Peru Chile trench in fact the majority of these quakes are in the last few hours uh, up, up in the um, well, the uh, Peru area as well, but this is going to be underneath this region. All three of these earthquakes uh, below 100 kilometers deep into that zone. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii. Let's see if we got anything stirring up out here. Looks like earthquake activity is kind of tapered off here slightly. Seen a couple twos and some ones out there. Let's double check the latest information here from the HVO, which is going to be uh, right here. Latest daily update on Kilauea Volcano, which is currently not erupting. Um, and it looks like just they mentioned about some signs of the uh, episodic unrest, the earthquake activity and elevated um, inflation data uh, basically shows uh, here it says the unrest is expected to continue to walk, wax and wane with the changes of input of magma in the area. That kind of makes sense, right? Um, obviously, ground swelling earthquake activities is volcanic gases, magma. Uh, all related to the volcano itself there. Um, so just kind of watching this. Uh, but right now, uh, with the earthquake activity, it looks like things have calmed down here a little bit. Um, these are deep, though, roughly about two to three kilometers underneath this area. So we may be seeing a, a further influx of magma. Let me double check the tilt meter here and see what we have for the Kilauea volcano. Uh, take a second to do this. We'll zoom in here to the UWE station. Ooh, it took a pretty good uptick here today, it looks like. Um, this is over the past two days here. Notice this trend in the last, oh, almost the last 12 hours or so. Pretty good sharp uptick here. That deeper movement quake that I'm, uh, deeper movement quakes that I'm talking about here could have something to do with it. Uh, might be seeing a, a larger reservoir of magma funneling up to this area um, I definitely want to keep an eye on that uh, let's see here go back here and the overall trend here I didn't mean to close that the overall trend of activity still shows onward and upward this is past 30 days of activity here we do have these little dips of quietness but the overall trend has been uptick and and more so today, it looks like, uh, you know, with this elevated sharp rise right here, definitely got to keep an eye on it. We'll watch that for some further quaking overnight. Main thing is to watch for these earthquakes and see if they get a little bit shallower in this region. Uh, I could see f some fissures open up out here in this area of the Kilauea volcano. All right, let's see here. What else we got? Japan area couple earthquakes from today one one of these pretty deep 4.4 into the japan trench the kurokamachaka pretty quiet for right now the alaska area very typical movement up there nothing major going on in the alaska area uh, areas out in the middle east region a couple earthquakes we got one earthquake out here in western afghanistan once again 
This is the area that's seen uh, quite a few sixes and fives and a bunch of unusual activity out here recently in this zone. Uh, well away from the plate boundary and a ways away from where we typic typically uh, see the earthquake activity. Uh, let's see one earthquake over here along the plate boundary near Nepal. 4.4 from earlier this morning. And it looks like some movement continuing out there in Turkey with that 4.2 going on earlier this morning. Uh, New Zealand looks like they got a 3.6 earthquake coming in right now, a deeper quake to that area. So let's go double check the GeoNet servers here. Make sure we got the most recent uh, data here from GeoNet. Shaking in the last hour. Looks like a little bit of reported activity here around the Wellington region. Uh, let's check out the earthquakes, see what we have. 3.2, that's from yesterday. Eight minutes ago, 3.6. So that's some of that Wellington, uh, or some of that uh, reports there around the Wellington area. North Island region, 145 kilometers deep. Goodness, that's pretty deep here. And that could be associated uh, around specifically this area at the southern end here of the Hikarangi subduction zone. This is another major player in producing some large damaging earthquakes. Just say we haven't seen it, uh, but it does have potential out there. All right, let's see what else we got for New Zealand. 1.7, a couple other smaller quakes in there as well. It looks like, looks like a little bit of movement around the Taupo super volcano. Let's see what we got here for drums around the area. Not really see anything major out there. No major swarms. A handful of smaller quakes out there in the last 24 hours or so. All right, let's see what else. Moving on here. Anything major out in the Atlantic? Doesn't look like it. Looks pretty quiet out there for now. Uh, 1.5 Northern California. Let's go ahead and check out the space weather. I see the auroras kicking up here as we speak. Uh, looks like this was somewhat, I think this was forecasted earlier this morning. Uh, looks like potential G1 class storm coming up here tonight and tomorrow night. We are seeing a little bit of heightened auroras up there at the polar down, up at the polar regions, and I'm sure down at the polar region there as well, around Antarctica. Um, but nothing huge. This is just a uh, minor activity event right now. Doesn't look like it's sparking up too much activity. Uh, maybe into the KP index of uh, two or three in the last couple hours. Forecast calls for around four to five G1 class storms. So we'll keep an eye on that, see if that uh, rings true. Solar flare threat is pretty minimal. Look at that 60% chance for a C flare, M flare at 5%. X flare and proton event less than that. Uh, that is due to the number of sunspots out here that are not all that complex out here. Looking pretty stable. In fact, the majority of these have dissipated even further since uh, this morning's update. And there doesn't look like there's a whole lot coming up around the bend as far as the eastern limb goes. Here's the eastern limb. Not a whole lot of potential out here. Looks like, the, almost looks like we're heading into solar minimum, but we're not. We're headed into solar maximum here in uh, about a year and a half, right? Maybe, what, what are we at, a year and a half? A little bit more than that, 2025 around june or so that's going to be the peak of the solar cycle 25 maximum um but aside from that looks like we're uh, just entering into a little quiet zone right now as far as uh, solar flare activity goes uh, a look at the numerical models out here i'm going to bring up the long range models and see what we have for forecast we've got it's kind of hot today i think it was about 93 here in Northern California, gonna be about the same tomorrow. We're underneath the uh, influence of high pressure out here along the West Coast. Uh, got some troughing going on, dipping here into the uh, portions of the Great Lakes and the Midwest area. That's gonna flip flop here in a little bit uh, with some cooler weather patterns coming up here for the West Coast areas as we head into early next week. And it uh, looks like that low pressure is gonna stick around for a little bit uh, of the majority of the next week coming up here. Uh, and that's going to get replaced, it looks like, with some uh, high pressure again. So weather patterns changing. It is getting that time of year where things uh, don't really stay consistent for too long. There's always uh, some troughing, high pressure ridging, and uh, a bunch of different pressures out here, right? That's just very typical 
um, for the um, this time of year. North American view here gives us a better perspective of what could be controlling these little patterns here in the um, in the states. Uh, today's time frame is roughly right about there. Massive high pressure up there off the coast of Alaska. That's a huge low pr or uh, high pressure. I'm hoping that stays up there, but it looks like it wants to settle down into the Gulf of Alaska area. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on this weather pattern, see how it uh, advances as we head into November. Definitely a, a mixed bag of all sorts of stuff so far this fall. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good day. Um, seismograph stations look pretty quiet. little spike there on the Petrolia Northern California station, but uh, nothing big going on there for now. And uh, real quick recap here. Doesn't look like there's any uh, thing else going on in Northern California, aside from that little bitty earthquake there near Middleton 1.6 coming in here uh, within the last 10 minutes or so. All right, folks, have a good night. Stay safe. We'll catch you guys back out here for your Thursday update, morning update tomorrow. Have a good night.